Moving day. Moving day in Canada is one of the most stressful days that you will ever come across. And I'm sure all of you would have moved at least once in your life, whether it's moving within the same city, in a different city in the same country, or moving across countries like we did when we moved from India. Hi Kinds, welcome back to our channel Be Kind. My name is Shrey and in today's video, we'll talk about some aspects of moving and how you can save money when it comes to moving day. Moving your houses was relatively much easier back in India. You could just do a call to any of the famous movers or packers. Generally, we used to do it with Agarwal packers and movers. They used to come to our house, do everything on their own, and we just had to supervise. Generally, this process was not that expensive. But in Canada, like everything else, you have to do a lot of these things on your own, unless you plan to spend a lot of big bucks. Back in December, we moved to our new condo from our earlier rental flat. There were two options that we had. We could either book a packers and movers service, which could cost, I think, maybe more than $400, $500. Or the second option was what we did, which was booking a U-Haul truck. <laughs> U-Haul is a very convenient option if you are moving especially within cities and it gives you not just cost savings but also a lot of control on how you want to move. You can decide your timing, you can move out when you are ready and you don't have to wait for packers and movers to come. In this video, we'll talk about everything related to U-Haul. How do you book it? What are the costs? What are some things to watch out for? And how was the driving experience? Especially if you have not driven a truck before. How is it? We will talk all, all about that in today's video. So let's get started. And in case you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. It will be a big help to us and it will help ensure that this video reaches out to a lot of people. And in case you have any questions about the entire process, please mention it in the comments and we'll try to address them. So the first step in this journey is to make a reservation on the U-Haul website. So let's go to the U-Haul website and I will show you what are the steps when it comes to making a reservation. So this is the U-Haul website. In here, you can, you can see there are various types of truck options available. I will also share what is the truck that we did when we were moving our one bedroom apartment. But the first thing is depending on whether you want to pick up or drop off at the same location or at the different location. In case you have also done a car rental in your life, if you are dropping off the car or the U-Haul truck at the same location, the cost will be much cheaper than doing it at a different location. So our preference was initially to drop off at the different location, but because it was so expensive, we opted out for doing a drop off at the same location. So we will do that here. We will pick up at Young and Eglinton, which was where we were moving from. And we will also do a drop off at Young and Eglinton. And let's choose a pickup date. And now let's click on get rates. You can also put your PIN code and your address here. It will show the location based on your PIN code as well. Now, as you will see, the cost for doing a same day drop off is 19.95. So it's just $20 to book any of the initial trucks. And then depending on how far you drive, it is 0.69 per kilometer. So we ended up booking this one, which was a 10 foot truck. It is suitable, as they say, for a studio to one bedroom apartment. I, we think that if you have reasonable amount of stuff in a one bedroom apartment, this one should be good enough. Um, but in case you need a bigger one, like maybe if you have more stuff, you could also consider doing the one bedroom to two bedroom apartment. But we did this one. But we had also sent a lot of our stuff back to IKEA. So we have made a separate video on that. But you can choose which type of truck do you want. You can also consider doing a nine foot cargo van, which is mostly for a one studio type apartment. So let's consider the 10 foot truck because this is what we did. So we will select this. Now you can choose your pickup location, which is available to the closest address that you have booked. So you can also go to Google and check how far it is and also look at the times of when they are open. Some of the locations like this one, the Pro Computer Consulting one, because this is what I, I used, they also allowed pickup and drop off after the office hours. So let's pick up the date. 
how long we need it let's pick up eight hours it's showing you the times that is available so as you will see after 2 30 a.m it's directly showing 5 30 p.m so it's not showing any time in the day because the truck is mostly booked so you can either take it up in the night so it means that this location allows an after hour pickup or you can then pick up maybe at 9 30 and that's the thing because i'm only booking for just two days ahead it is not showing me enough time so now let's try to book maybe sometime in april and then we will see how the how the things change so as you will see i have now selected an april date and you will see now i am seeing all the time options available so it it's important that you schedule a u-haul truck well in advance so that they can make it available for you so with this now maybe i i have the pickup time available um, which is nine o'clock i need it for six hours and then I will continue. So you can either choose how do you want to pick up. You can either do at the counter during business hours or you can do on your phone. So I think on the phone is easy. So I will choose that. But in case you are comfortable with during business hours pickup, you can choose that. So I will pick this. So the next step is to choose type of a damage protection. So there is $16 that they will charge for any accident damage or theft of U-Haul truck or any damage to your belongings. Because I was doing U-Haul for the first time and I was driving a truck for the first time, I ended up opting for this $16 additional charge. But in case you are comfortable, you can not take it. Or in case there are some credit cards which also offer rental coverage insurance, so you can, you can look at that and not take it. So I ended up taking this $16. So now let's move ahead. You can see the, the details of the coverage here. In case you need any equipments, you can take it from here, like any dollies or furniture pads or any, any boxes, but we didn't end up taking this. So I will click zero. As you will see, by default, it was selected as one. So I have moved it to zero and ensure everything is zero just to so that we are not charging anything else. Or you can also click on no thanks. I do not need these items. Moving ahead, they will ask you whether you need any type of storage unit. So for example, if you are moving to India and you need a place where you can store your belongings till the time you come back, so you can also do that, but I do not need this. So I will click here. Next, they will ask you if you need any type of boxes. So we had already gotten the boxes and moving stuff from Home Depot, which is relatively cheaper than what you're getting here. So we did not pick it up. So I selected do not pick these equipments. So this is the total cost. The $20 is for the truck. $1 is environmental fee. And then the pickup and drop off is at the same location. You have I've added the $16 for the damage coverage. I do not have anything else. And the total cost is coming to 36.95 plus how many kilometers you drive. So for example, we drove 40 kilometers, depending on this 90 cents, it was about 30 40 dollars additional now one thing important to note here especially when you are doing a pickup and drop off at the different location it is not confirmed until maybe one day prior so say you have booked a pickup in young and eglinton like we did and drop off in etobicoke it is likely that you can get a call from u-haul one day prior and they will tell you that we do not have a truck in your preferred location so either you change your location or you do a pickup and drop off at the same location. So what you're seeing here is your preference. It is not guaranteed by U-Haul that you will get it like this. Th this was like a hard lesson for us. So just ensure that you are planning for it, that some things can change. It's always better to do a pickup and drop off at the same location. You are much more likely to get the truck rather than doing a pickup and drop off at the different location. So now let's do the checkout. When you will do the checkout, they will ask you for your billing details. You put that, you put your car details and that's pretty much it. Um, you don't need anything else. And that's the, the process to booking a U-Haul truck. So now that you have booked your U-Haul truck, the next step that you have to do is the check-in at the time of when you're picking up the truck. 
So one tip here, it's better to always give a call to your pickup location one or two days prior just to understand the process from them because sometimes it's possible that the trucks are not at the same location as the pickup location and because it depends on where they have gotten the parking. So you, you can figure that out maybe by calling them or visiting them one day prior. So I did that and I understood that the trucks were not at the same location. It was just a five minute walk to where the trucks were. So for us, we had to go to the truck location and do the check-in process using the U-Haul app. When you open the U-Haul app, it will ask you some questions when it comes to taking pictures of the trucks and also what is the odometer reading, clicking a photo of the odometer and both the inside and outside of the truck, which is also helpful for you. So you can also save these photographs for your reference just so that there is no conflict later on. For us, the key was in a lockbox uh, by the driver's side. So the owner of the U-Haul truck uh, sent me the, the code via message on my phone and I could get the key from that lockbox and I just started the truck and started moving. So that is about the check-in process. Now let's move to how is the driving experience of driving a U-Haul truck. So at first I was very nervous about driving a truck because it was the first time that I was uh, driving such a big vehicle. And one thing is you have to really see your corners because it's a much bigger vehicle and you don't have a rear view mirror as well because it's covered at the back. So I was finding it difficult to see how to look at the, the traffic coming from the backside. But what I noticed after maybe just five minutes, I was much more comfortable in driving that truck. At first I was driving really slow, ensuring that my corners were really good. And after some time, I was able to understand how to drive that vehicle much better. And the side view mirrors that are there in U-Haul, um, both on, on the driver side as well as the passenger side, they are much bigger than a car side view mirror. So it really gives a full length picture of the traffic coming from back. So I took the U-Haul truck and then I parked it in my building complex and then we started loading the stuff. I also asked a friend to come and help me with the loading. And so it was the three of us and it was pretty good for doing it for a one bedroom apartment. We had already packed everything before the moving day. The loading process took us about three hours and then we were ready to take it to the drop location. So I started driving and it was also raining while I was driving. It was a bit nervous experience for me at first, but then eventually I got used to it and everything went fine. And when we reached our new address, some friends also came in to help us with the unloading, which was much quicker process. It, it took, I think, one and a half hour to do the entire process. We had block the lifts on both the locations to just ensure that we we don't have to wait for the lifts and then it was the time to take the truck back to the start location just like you have in a car rental it's better that you leave the fuel at the same level as you had gotten at the start of the trip so we stopped at a gas station, filled the fuel to the same level as it was as when we had picked the vehicle, saved that receipt from the gas station just for our records. And then we went to the drop location, completed the checkout process, which also was just to click pictures of all the sites that we had done earlier, clicking pictures of the odometer and the fuel reading, put the key back in the lockbox, and that's it. So depending on the kilometers, we got a final receipt, which was charged to our credit card. And that was it about the U-Haul process. So it was pretty convenient. If you have a car, you can also consider booking a trolley, which you can attach to your car and take it along. So that's another option. It wasn't an option for us, but you can also consider doing that. That was all about booking a U-Haul truck. It's really easy and it can help you save a lot of dollars and also give you that control so if you like this video please like it and share it with your friends who might be in a similar journey if you have any questions around this process please reach out to us in our comment section or reach out to us on instagram on our handle be kind 18 that's it for this video hope you liked it and we will see you soon another time thank you and goodbye